Okay guys, so this is part two of the cruising air rods. If you haven't seen part one, go back and look at it. It's a, a natural building of the cruising air rods and I think it will be useful to look at that first before moving on. So, um, when you are making rods of the same color over and over and you are writing things down, um, so this would be purple, plus purple, plus purple, plus purple. Eventually, you or your child are going to get tired of writing plus purple. And you can just start to say, oh, look, I have one, two, three, four purples, or four of purple. And this multiplication takes the place of of. It's a quick way of counting. And you can also, you will start to see that we're making triangles with these. This one actually makes a square, but if we have five purple, five of purple gives us what? And then they can take these out and measure and see that 5 of purple gives us 20. Um, moving in the inverse of that, if you're wanting to do division and you have 20 and you have how many 4s fit into 20? And when I go and look at how many 4s, I get 5. Five fours fit into 20. Um, this also works like multiplication when you have higher numbers. This is called the area model, sometimes the window method for multiplication. Say we wanted to multiply 15 times 3, we would need 3 15s. So on this side, we have 10 plus 5, or 15. On this side, we have 3. So we can see if we separate these that 10, 10 times 3, or 3 tens, plus 3 times 5, and I'm going to put parentheses here so that you can see that these are different units. So this would give us 30, and this would give us 15, and our answer would be 45. And for those that don't know, this is why the algorithm works. When you are writing um, 15 times 3, and you are multiplying 5 times 3, you are multiplying the 5 ones times the 3, which gives you 15. But as we know, this is a 10, and we can just put it up here with our other 10s for later. So the 5 goes here, and this 1 goes to remind us that we have another 10. And then we multiply our 10s. Here are our 10s, 10 times 3, which gives us 30. This is the 10s place here. So that would be our 3, but we also have that other 10 from the 15, so that would give us 45. This is why this algorithm works. This is just an, a way, an easy way to calculate, but this is understanding the concept. Okay, so it goes through a deeper level of multiplication. Um, I think I've written on all my papers now. So the, the cool thing about this is that when you're working with the same base, say you have, um, 4 times 4, and then times 4. Again, just like with addition, eventually it's going to get a little cumbersome, and you might not even have enough rods to do 4 cubed. 4 times 4 times 4. And so what Galette 
no, moves into doing are what's called crosses, where this now represents four times four, and each time you add a layer, you're multiplying another. So four times four times four times four. Um, this, your crosses do not have to be of the same base. Two times three would either be two threes or three twos. And either one of those gives you six. And if you lay them on top of each other, you see that they're the same. Um, but the really cool thing about this is it segues into exponents. So however many twos you're using to multiply, that's your exponent. So this is 2 to the 4th. Well, it just happens to be 4 high. I don't know if you can see that. but um, And so what they eventually move into are what's called L's. And this means that this is four crosses. It's, it's the same as this right here. And what we find when we're working with these, that if you have um, this, which is the same as this right here, 2 to the 4th, and then you have 2 to the 3rd, which would be represented this way right here. When we multiply these two together, our towers multiply together. So, and this is why exponents add. When you multiply exponents, why it adds. So this becomes 2 to the 4th times 2 to the 3rd. When we add these together, is this tall tower right here, 2 to the 7th. This is called a, a log rhythm scale. So what we're able to do at this point, when we move to L's, is work with exponents um, with multiplication and division. So if you are dividing by, let's just say, 2, then this comes down to 2 to the 6. It's a great visual for kids. Um, and the last thing that I'm going to talk about is that this is, especially this area model, when you get to algebra, um, these are, are a great way of showing how numbers work. For instance, my oldest is in algebra, we just started the multiplication of polynomials. If we're working on a 10 base and we're doing multiplication, if we have two numbers that we're multiplying with a 10 in it, say we're multiplying 12 by 13, well, our 10 by 10 is going to be 10 squared. Or 100 so I need to find I'm just going to use make this easy on myself and use our 10 by 10 our 2 by 10 are going to be 20 our 3 by 10 are going to be 30 and then our 2 by 3s are going to be 6 so 13, you see on this side I have 10 and 3, and on this side I have 10 and 2. So 12 times 13 is 156. Well, when you, that's how our 10 base system goes. When you are doing, in algebra, we used these to be our x's. And in reality, these should stretch back and forth because we don't know how long they actually are. But if you are doing x plus 3 
times x plus 4, then we know x plus x gives us x squared. We know x times 4 gives us 4 x's. x times 3 gives us 3 x's, and 4 times 3 gives us 12. Right there. So our equation, or our expression, because it's not really an equation, um, well, it could be an equation. x plus 3 times x by 4 is, or x plus 4 is x squared plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7x plus 12. And this works the opposite way when you're looking for factors of a polynomial. If I have x squared plus 7x plus 12, how can I make this into a rectangle? Anyway, these are great visuals. I hope that's helpful. You guys enjoy.